Live from the Country Living Newbie Studios here in beautiful Spring Hill, Tennessee, in association with Dixie Bell Paint Company, it's Bill and Pam's Excellent Paint Adventure, starring Pam Jordan. Please tell me we're not live. We're live. That was real? That, that was, was real. real? Yeah. All right. Well, that was quite an intro. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's feeling a little, uh, I don't know, frisky or something tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, well, it's Pam and Bill from Country Living Newbie Custom Decor in Spring Hill, Tennessee, as um, Bill, uh, I'd say alluded to, but he pretty much just told you. <laughs> so welcome to uh, Saturday Night Live with us. We have this Saturday night and next Saturday night, so um, we're happy to be with you on your weekend, and thanks for joining us. Uh, we are a premier Dixie Bell retailer in Spring Hill, Tennessee, just a, a little bit south of Nashville. And we've been doing this for just over a year. Um, and uh, we love coming on and sharing our projects with you. So we're gonna do that tonight with this gorgeous kidney-shaped desk. Now, a lot of the painting I did um, prior to this video because tonight we're gonna kind of focus on some of the accents. Um, but we'll talk about um, how we started out with this desk and kind of where we're at. And then I would love for your help as well as we kind of make some decisions on hardware and some different colors. So first of all, if you're joining, um, let us know where you're from. Let us know if you're a first time viewer. Let us know if you use Dixie Bell paint, if you've never used it, but you're dying to try it. Um, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Dixie Bell should be on, if not, uh, they are. on shortly. Hey, Dixie Bell. They were the first ones on. The first ones on, yeah. yay. <laughs> and somebody named Megan Meadows. <laughs> Hi, Megan. And kudos <laughs> to Megan, put her first, um, her first picture up on Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast and has almost 300 likes already. You go, girl. <laughs> she says she's painting while she's watching. <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So this desk um, was, let's take a, let's see if we can take a drawer out. Um, so it was pretty much just a wooden desk. It's uh, mahogany. It is mahogany. So, it is, the drawers look, are some oak in there. Um, I had a little bit of concern painting it that it was going to do some bleeding and um, I did not put Voss on it. I was going to. I actually started with slick stick on it and normally I don't use slick stick. Normally you don't need it and generally you don't need both Voss and slick stick, although um, on rare occasions you do. But I, I just felt like the, the wood was really just a little um, too slick just to put paint right on it. It probably would be okay, but I just felt a little better putting um, putting some slick stick on as kind of a bonding agent. So I put that on and I noticed pretty quickly that um, some areas, especially, um, especially in the grooves, were turning just a hint of pink. And the, the mahogany, uh, the stain on here was pretty, was pretty red. You could see it like on the inside um, of the edges of the drawers. So I went ahead and painted it gray. I waited overnight. Um, it actually, the, the paint did not come through at all. So I went ahead and, and chanced it. Ugh, I hope I don't regret it, <laughs> but we'll see. Even on the white, um, and it looks kind of funky. You can, you can probably, I don't know if you can see it here or not, but I had the hardware on and I originally painted it with the hardware. I had never done that before and I decided I kind of like the way that looks, so let me just leave the hardware on and paint over it. Um, and then I decided I wanted to stencil the drawers, so then I had to take the hardware off, right, and, and sand it down and paint over it. And it's pink coming through where I didn't put um, slick stick. And I know slick stick is not a, um, like a stain or um, bleed through blocker, but it seems to be fine, you know, where I put it and not fine where the <coughs> hardware is. But the hardware is going back over it, so we're going to keep our fingers crossed. So everybody has to keep their fingers crossed. We don't have a bleeder. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so tonight, uh, well, let's, let's, let's go back a little bit. So, so we, we're out of healthcare and we're still dealing with bleeders? We're still dealing with bleeders. Great. <laughs> if anyone can stop the bleeding, we can, right? <laughs> <laughs> All bleeding stops eventually. That's right. Okay, so we painted this in, so we started with our slick stick. Um, after we cleaned it with white lightning, rinsed it off. I just did one coat of slick stick because, again, I, it probably didn't even need it, but it just gives it a little bit of tooth for the paint to stick on. Uh, and then we painted the whole thing except for the drawers in driftwood, which is a very nice um, kind of soft gray. So that's driftwood. 
there's the spoon, so you can kind of see it. It's a nice soft gray. And then we did the drawers in fluff, which is a nice soft white, a little, um, kind of a little gray undertone, so it goes good with the driftwood. Um, then we gave it a whole sanding. So actually not even a sanding. We took a little sanding pad and literally just just like that, and it's smooth as a baby's bottom. So you don't need to like sand it real, real hard to get it smooth. You really just need to kind of just go right across it and it knocks that grit right off and it's nice and smooth. As long as it makes that noise? You gotta go ch -ch -ch when you do it. Yeah. Well, you, you only did to... two ch -ch before. Is well, it two or three? Depends how big the piece is. Okay. <laughs> you gotta do at least one <laughs> ch -ch, then you're good. Okay, so that's kind of um, where we got to here. Now, I, um, I'm debating on the hardware, so as we go through this video, you guys can give me some suggestions. We have three options on the hardware. Either we're gonna go with it white, we're gonna go with tea rose, or this is tea rose with the rose, pink rose, um, pink rose, yes, I'm still learning these names, just rose, the metallic over it. So we figured this would be more used like a vanity rather than a desk anyway, so we thought we could, right, we thought we could put a little, um, a little pink in there to make it a little feminine. So kind of think about that. Um, so some other decisions that I think we've kind of made, but of course, uh, always looking for feedback. My, my original plan was to um, stencil all the drawers with kind of a, um, like a tile-like <coughs> stencil and then do stripes, and we'll turn this around so you can see it, but and do stripes around the curve. And then I went, hmm, I don't know if I'm quite up for doing all those stripes. So then I decided, let's just do stripes on the small drawer here. But then I thought the, drawer, the rest of the drawers would look plain. So I have literally changed my mind 7,000 times on this piece. So what we're gonna do is um, step by step and as, throw out ideas, right? We'll make decisions as we go. We're gonna start with stripes on this drawer. And I'm gonna do those to match the driftwood. But then we have this, stencil on the side. Can you see? Yeah, I'll move. So we have this stencil that's going to go around the side on both sides. Um, and I think we'll do that. <coughs> We're going to start with fluff to pull in the color from the drawers. And then I thought of either adding a darker gray, maybe hurricane gray, or like the, um, the pink in the hardware, maybe we'd go with some uh, fluff and tea rose on the side. So tons of decisions to be made. Um, don't even know how far we'll get tonight <laughs> because I'm pretty indecisive on this one. Cynthia's asking, where can I find all the colors you offer in this paint? <clears throat> is uh, that is that a Dixie Bell? Yeah, you can go to um, Dixie Bell's um, DixieBellPaintCompany.com, um, their website, and there's uh, all the colors are there. You can click on it, or even gives you examples. Mm -hmm. Of pieces done in those colors um, and there is a color card and we actually on our Facebook page Country Living Newbie at Country Living Newbie um, we have a, a, a picture of the color card as well 64 colors you will not want for a color <laughs> okay so we're gonna start with doing some stripes so I went ahead and marked the middle already and there's you know Different ways you can do stripes. You could start at one end and go that way. I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. And how we're going to do this is um, we're going to use the, I think this is one inch, one inch tape. And we start with our one in the middle and then we're going to take a little piece as a spacer because we want our stripes to be all the same size, right? So we're going to use a little spacer here. And then we're going to put another piece of tape right next to it. And then we're going to remove our spacer and move it over. And we're just going to keep doing that until we get to the end. And you want to make sure you rub your edges down. We're going to um, do a little sealing with them too. But you want to make sure that they're nice and flat because nothing worse than getting bleed through when you do stripes. A lot of bleeding going on in this project. <laughs> we like to live on the edge. All right. And I'm sure everyone is experiencing 
the heat like we are. The comments are probably more about the heat. <laughs> Is everyone like, then, just oh, yeah. dying? Yeah. Oh my. And a lot of people are experiencing some heavy storms too. Yeah, we're looking a little dark out our window. Our heat index was like 105 today. Just, just really. I think really I read. Hot. I think I read Boston was 110. Wow. So who thinks they were the hottest today? Where are you at? And what was the, the temperature or the heat index? Oh, what am I doing? Pay attention. Sorry. Stripes are pretty easy, especially if you're working on a small piece like this. You can get a little tricky when you're pulling out pieces of tape, you know, several feet long. But these are a good way to start. If you've never done stripes, do a little drawer. <coughs> and you will be addicted to stripes after you do them. <laughs> they just, they're just really, really fun. All right, we're gonna go right to the edge here. And I don't think... Jenny Freeman says her index was 108. Ooh, where are you at? <clears throat> Where's that? That is pretty hot. I don't know if I'm going to go up on the top or not with the stripe. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, no. Drawer is going to be closed. Southeast Kansas, Denise says we are literally at 114 degrees today. Oh my goodness. Wow. <clears throat> and Ellen Kin Kincaid says she's already addicted to strike. <laughs> oh. There is help for you. I'm glad we can feed your addiction. <laughs> oh, we're supposed to be getting her help. <laughs> I don't think there is help for this. It just gets worse. <laughs> Every time you learn something new, it's like just one more thing to be addicted to. <laughs> That's how I feel. I look at this and I'm like, I want to do stripes. I want to do a transfer. I want to do a stencil. I want to do the metallics. So you kind of get where you just got to settle yourself down and like pick a couple things, one or two things and go ahead and do it. There's always more pieces down the road. But it's hard to uh, it's hard to wait sometimes. All day long today, I wanted to come up here and do these stripes. <laughs> it was killing me to have to wait till tonight. <clears throat> Marty Bailey says it's a cool seventy-five <gasps> on Bainbridge Island in Washington. Oh, that sounds nice. Sorry, you're all swelter. swelter. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I can't remember when it was 75 years. Of course, it's probably it perpetually like raining where he is. <laughs> but we hope not. Yeah. All right. Elaine Cameron says, I like the white drawers and the color base. Thank you. Yeah, it's kind of and soft. Ellen, Ellen Kincaid said, is there an intervention group? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dixie Bell, you need to start like a help group too yeah. <laughs> for all us that are addicted to your stuff. <laughs> nope, I think it's I think it's a uh, terminal. Terminal. It's not terminal. No, like, it's uh, yeah, chronic. 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 Yeah. Now that. That's odd. I'm not sure if you started in the middle. <laughs> ah, crap. <laughs> That's right. I wonder if I should take that off and just make that one a little wider. No, it's, it's no, fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're rolling with it. Okay, so the trick with stripes is, first of all, make sure that your tape... And second of all, make sure you start in the middle. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> I, I eyeballed the middle. Yeah. On this one. <laughs> You're supposed to come behind me and check. I just assumed you did it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you do stripes, you can take a little bit of your base coat, which is fluff, 
really windy. It's getting very like really windy. windy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can take a little bit of your base coat, and I just use my finger, put a little bit on my finger, and I rub it on the edge. Because that's where you live. Because we live on the edge. And this will help seal off those edges. So when I go to put the gray on, it will not bleed. At least that is the goal. And I just like to use my finger because if you rub it in, it kind of creates a nice flat seal as opposed to using a brush. And I'm afraid if I use a brush, I might um, lift the tape up a little bit. But you can certainly use a brush to do this. And by the time you get, you're using such little paint, by the time you get done, you're ready to come back and paint your stripe. So don't forget to invite friends to check out our video, share their Saturday night with us. If they're inside staying cool. I showed a picture of the radar that's coming, the storms that are coming our way. <laughs> <clears throat> Ellen says, uh, is it Ellen? No. Jenny says, send that north. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if we have that kind of power. The rain, you need rain? Apparently. We've had a lot of rain. All right. Sandra asks, you showed the map, but I couldn't tell where it was. It's a... Uh, it's about an hour south of Nashville, Tennessee. Right in the middle. <laughs> Ellen says, yikes, leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Save yourself. <laughs> this, the, the, house we're in, <laughs> the house we're in has been here since 1856. Yeah. It has withstood <laughs> the great fire of Spring Hill, the tornadoes that have come through. Oh, that's the air. Yeah, that's like, the oh my God, what was that? <laughs> Yeah, this house is safer than our own house. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is where I would go. All right, we're on to our last one. I know this is so super exciting. <laughs> hey, we get to finger paint. All right. All right, so now we're all sealed off and we are going to come in with our driftwood. These bottles are nice, but sometimes you get what I call a paint worm, <laughs> and you have to pull it out. Actually, there it is. Not too bad. Patsy from North Carolina. Thanks for joining, guys. I know it's Saturday night, and there's a bazillion things you could be doing. And if you, unless you're us. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're us, and this is it. Uh, I'm going to use the flat, small, synthetic Dixie Valve brush to do the stripes. It's just kind of a perfect um, width for that. Uh, I wonder... We're not going to tape off the top. We're just going to wing it. We're just going to wing it. For time's sake. Yeah. And if we go up, we shouldn't get over the edge anyway. <clears throat> Hopefully we won't lose signal because of these storms that are coming through. We've been, I won't say it out loud. We've done all right so far. What just, brush is that? We have a question. This is the flat small. So I think it's an inch. Yeah. It's just perfect for doing stripes. Denise P Patty watching from Spring Hill, Florida. We just moved from Spring Hill, Florida. Well, not just, three years ago. Yeah. We moved from Spring Hill, Florida, and now our store is in Spring Hill, Tennessee. <laughs> and Carolyn from Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia, oh, eh? Nice. Thank you guys for joining. And yes, we are near Nashville. Yep, we're about 40 miles south. So if anyone comes to Nashville, look us up. 
We got a few good Seabell retailers um, in the Nashville surrounding area. Yeah. Yeah. Denise says, I just got that brush. You like? It's good. Finally, a DB brush. It's amazing. Yeah, these are good. Susan Wall from, uh, it looks like Leamington, Ontario. Nice. If that's what aunt means. I think it's a pretty good guess. Elaine Cameron is from Evansville, Tennessee. Nice. Jenny says, you guys are so cute. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Bridget from Big Flats, New York. New York. And Debbie, Debbie, I'm going to murder your name here. <laughs> Atzu... Atzuski from Canada. Oh boy. A lot of folks from Canada. Thanks for joining, guys. All right. Saskatchewan. So we're going to give this <laughs> uh, probably another coat. So let's kind of go back to the hardware. So start thinking about um, <clears throat> maybe what hardware we should do. So we have the white. We have the tea rose with rosé metallic over it. And then we have just tea rose. Um, we'll, we'll flip this around, we'll start the stencil in just a minute, so we can kind of see once we get the stripes on and get the stencil on, you know, do we want to keep it kind of soft with tea rose or do we want to put a little bit of, a little bit of bling in it with the metallic? Let's go back over this and then we'll take our tape off and hopefully we'll have perfect stripes. If not, we'll fix them. Just paint, guys. You mess up. All you gotta do is paint over it. <clears throat> Alright, Debbie Culbertson says, middle one is my favorite. The blingy one? That's the one Bill likes, too. Yep. Yeah. It's hard not to use the metallics once you see them on. They are um, so pretty. Really pretty. Sherry from North Central Texad. I'm thinking that might be a sp spelling error. <laughs> We're gonna go with Texas. Texas? We're gonna go with Texas. Anybody Here's Polly on? from Flower Mound, Texas. Anybody on for the first time? <laughs> Sherry says, sorry, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Sherry. What is below the tea rose? That's tea rose with rosé metallic over it. So it's just a little bit of shininess. Donna Duncan says, bling it. Bling it. Bling it. Bling it. <laughs> when in doubt, bling it, says Ellen. <laughs> so you guys are telling me you can't go wrong with, uh, with bling. Yeah, because I think if this was going to be like a desk, you know, we might go a little different route. But I do think this will be like a vanity. It'd be nice if we can find a mirror. Why do you think it'll be a vanity? Because I have one just like it. You do? Yes. In fact, maybe I'll trade mine and keep this one. Oh. <laughs> no, you bought me that one. I special. bought you that one. Yeah, that was special. <clears throat> Special gift. I got it at uh, in Atlanta. All right. Let's take off these pieces of tape, and then we'll get to the stencil. Elaine Croft Cameron, watching for the first time. Yay! Thank you, Elaine. You will be addicted now. And a lot of people from Texas. Yeah. And Jamie likes the bling as well. All right. Here's the reveal. T Rose. Oh, here we go. Now, yep, let me get closer. I literally just finished painting this drawer this morning. So uh, if you can stand to wait putting tape on your paint for at least a day, I would recommend that. Because again, you want to give your paint a ch you know, chance to really bond. And sometimes when you peel your tape off, you can take your paint with it if it's too soon. So that's why I'm going super slow. I'm using the purple tape. It's, um, it's delicate tape. So it seems to 
do pretty good with not pulling tape, uh, paint off. But our stripes are perfecto so far. We've got a long way to go, but hopefully, go this way. <laughs> Holly says there are a lot of people in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yep. <laughs> There's a few. There's a few. Susan Douglas says, I'm from Granbury, Texas. Uh, Woohoo! <laughs> okay, who's not from Texas? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> We're happy to have everybody from Texas and everybody who's not. We love Texas. All right. And if you are a Dixie Bell retailer, uh, put your your store or your booth in there let people know where you're at because everybody should have their very own dixie bell retailer uh-oh hold on just lost a lost a nap <laughs> almost landed in my pocket <laughs> so these are coming out pretty good um they do get a little uh, raised from the tape so after it's all dry i'll hit it with um some real fine sandpaper just to kind of knock those edges down again. What kind of noise does that sandpaper make? Yeah. Yep. Vivian Duet from Alabama. Hi, Vivian. We had some folks from Birmingham in our store today, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And if you're a Dixie Bell brand ambassador, Put that in there too, so people know who you are, who are new. You know who to go watch and follow to learn all these great things. All right, look at that. Nice, so we're thinking about Right? The, the blame. Ooh. Yeah. Good call, guys. Good call. I don't want to get it too far in there, but I like that is super cute. It's got to be blingy, right? Hang on. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Pain all over my hands. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> <laughs> Fail. <laughs> Epic no, fail. Not, not, right. not blingy enough. Got to go right. with the bling. The decision is made. Okay, we're not going to do that tonight, though. <clears throat> All right, so next we are going to turn this around. And I know you all are going to ask me the name of this stencil. But I don't remember. <laughs> but I threw out the package. So this is a Redesign with Prima stencil, and it actually comes, and I'll, I'll drop it in the comments uh, once I figure it out, or I can fish it out of the garbage, I guess. But it comes in these two strips, and they're different, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one strip around this side, and then one strip around the other, and it'll all be different, um, like, tiles, okay? So, Good? Yeah. Okay. And I'll move if you need. Okay, so I think we're going to start with, um, with fluff. And then we'll add a couple other colors, or at least one other color. And maybe the metallic we'll add on here too. We'll see how it goes. Uh... So, um, unfortunately, this is a um, plastic reusable stencil, so there's nothing we can really do to seal it like we did um, with the tape. So, when you use these, you, I end up just painting my whole hand, basically, but you really got to kind of hold it down while you do your stenciling. Keep a very dry brush. If you put a glob of paint and go to stencil, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bleed all over. So keep your dress, your brush pretty dry, and I use these brushes for stenciling. They are essentially the same, 
but these are um, from Redesign with Prima as well. You can use them as wax brushes too, but um, look at this big old fat stencil brush. I mean, you will get done with your stencil in like no time. So there's, um, there's three different sizes and then they make some little ones as well. So these are just real good. They're nice and flat and firm. So they're great for stenciling and getting a lot of coverage. Couple of questions. Yes. Do you use spray adhesive sometimes on the back of the stencil? I, on the furniture, I haven't. Um, I'm just really careful with the stencil. Like if we do signs sometimes, maybe, um, but generally we don't. And I, I've heard of people doing that, but sometimes I think the adhesive, right, may stick to, um, to the furniture. But you can get a pretty clean stencil as long as you follow the stenciling rules. Okay, so we're gonna use this brush and we're gonna start. We're gonna dip in a little bit and then we're gonna we're gonna offload our brush. So the brush is almost dry. I'd rather start out with a really dry brush and then add more paint if I need to than go to dab it on and go, oh man, uh, that's a mess. So, so here we go. And the edge is gonna be a little tricky, which I should have taped this off. I'll paint over that with the gray. Not too worried about it. <clears throat> the paint bottles are called? FIFO. FIFO. Or FIFO, first in, first out. You can, and you get, can them get them on, you can get them on Amazon. online there's stores. Di there's different uh, sizes. I think these are the 12 ounce. Uh, I find the ones, and they'll have different color um, dispensers on the bottom. I find the ones that are yellow seem to work pretty good with the consistency of the paint. And people, some people store them either way. I mean, I store mine down because it's supposed to be first in, first out. Um, but there's a lot of people that store them that way. That's fine too. But they don't leak. Most of the time. Most of the time. I'm going very light here. I almost don't even mind if it's kind of a faded, <clears throat> kind of a faded stencil look. Probably seeing a lot of my head, sorry. I mean, we could even do each tile a different color, but I think we'll stay consistent and then we'll layer another color on top. But you can see how fast you get done with one of these brushes. This isn't even the biggest one. Elaine says the faded stencil look is awesome. I love that. Isn't that nice? You don't have to get like full coverage with it. It just kind of makes it look soft. Wow, it's a really big bird. <laughs> we have a church next door with a really tall steeple and the, um, what are they called? The not buzzards or the, what are mm -hmm. they called? Buzzards. Yeah. Turkey buzzards. They sit like right on top of this pointed steeple. I don't know how they do it. Maybe we could even do stripes on the top. Is that too much? For today. Well, not today. <laughs> um, if we have time, wow, it's kind of wise. I was gonna say, if we have time, I was gonna throw a coat of gator hide on the top. We get so many questions um, about gator hide and applying it. So maybe we'll finish this, and if we have time, we'll do a quick coat of gator hide. <clears throat> comment. <laughs> All that laundry that's been sitting on the bed in the spare room for a month. What about the laundry that's been sitting next to the TV? <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> All right, so always be careful of this with Prima's stencils. They put their name at the bottom 
and you could stencil their name <laughs> right onto your project, which I'm sure they would love. I wonder if they do that deliberately. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be, and that's true of their um, silk screen stencils uh, and these stencils. You just have to be careful. back over it all a little bit darker now now that I kind of have my first layer on I'm thinking maybe doing a darker gray so I don't want just white over here what do you guys think about maybe adding a little gravel road ah that was not good you didn't offload I did not you might need to Fix that one up. <laughs> we got Marla saying painting is so much more fun than laundry. <laughs> right? Sorry about my head. All right. So we can take a little peek. And it's round. Yeah. So I'll go over that end part there, but you can kind of see it's not full coverage, but I like that. We'll put it back and then let's, um, what do you think? Should we do a little darker gray or tea rose or both? Maybe both. I say, yeah, start off with the gray. All right, so this is. Although Sandra says I would go with the pink instead of the dark gray. With T Rose. Maybe we do that and then we do just a little bit of the darker gray. Like the pink is our main second color. Elaine says T Rose. If it were me, I would do a, just a, like a little bit of the dark gray and then you could always go over it with the pink. Yeah. We'll do a little bit in here. Maybe I'd rather have more pink than dark gray. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's do. So we'll take one of these smaller ones and we're just gonna do a little bit and then we'll do the rest with the um, tea rose. So we're just gonna take it from the lid. Seems to be a mix of people saying gray and tea rose. So. <laughs> it's hard to decide. I so let's do both. All. I wanna use them all. <laughs> all right, so this one is a hurricane gray. Um, I thought you were using gravel road. What did I say? Hurricane gray, sorry. Hurricane Gray, a little bit lighter than Gravel Road. So maybe we'll do like in the center. Just, I would just do it randomly. All right, Mr. Bossy Boss. I'm suggesting. Jeez. Usually your suggestions are fairly good, fairly good. You could also use gilding waxes on this to do some stenciling, so that's very pretty. Should we do some of the metallic though to bring in the hardware? Because we could do just the metallic rosé, and that'll be like tea. That's like a. That's almost like a metallic tea rose. They're very similar. So then we get the best of both worlds. This is still pretty wet. You haven't painted your whole hand yet. <laughs> Actually, this is staying down pretty good. All right. I have to peek. Bathroom's over there. Peek. Oh, peek. Oh. Good. 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 Yeah, add a little bit of pink now, and I think you're good. All right. Should we do the metallic pink or regular pink? I'd bring in the metallic. Bring in the metallic. Yep. Okay, so Dixie Bell has new metallics out. There's five of them. They are moonshine metallics. This one is rosé. You can see it's, um, it goes really good with tea rose. In fact, I did a dresser um, using some of this and very pretty. So they come in the 16 ounce only. 
but they're different than their uh, original metallics where you had a base coat and a top coat. They're a little bit thinner. Okay, so they're a little bit thinner than their um, than the mineral paint. So we want to be really careful when we do this. And I think I'll use a little bit bigger brush because we're going to do a little bit heavier. A little bit heavier, yeah. All right. And I have a horrible habit, if I don't move a plate, of dipping into the wrong color. So <laughs> we're going to move it right out of the way. We'll go right from the lid here. And we're going ahead, we're going a little more heavy with this, right? Than with the gray. Yes. Still random though. It's so hard to be random. Yes. <laughs> Janet Tharp says, hi Pam, sorry I'm so late. Hey Janet. All right, well that concludes today's painting. <laughs> now that Janet's here, uh, show's over. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, you come to the store anytime we're doing one of these. Hang out with us. Grab a brush. Yeah. Better yet, grab a camera. <laughs> so so I don't, Bill can go So home. I don't have to do this. <laughs> so Bill can go home. Let's just see how we're doing. Oop, gotta go back. Oh, good, huh? Oh, nice. Okay. Pretty. If you don't trust yourself putting it back, don't peek. Consistent. I think I did that whole tile. Thing. Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> you guys aren't policing me. I wonder if I need to go Jean back. Jean Dar says, I think you ruined it. <laughs> no, she actually says it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> No, it looks good. It looks great. Great. Oh, I love. Yep, nice. Awesome. Okay. Put this down. I need to see it from the front. I can't see. Oh, you want to move it? Yeah. Oh, I like that a lot. So pretty. Okay. So... <laughs> Jean says, LOL, fire the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> no, then I can't do any videos. Yeah. <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to try to do one like myself because I always have to rely on him to come in after the store uh, closes. So I'm like, I just need to do one myself. But I haven't done it yet. Okay. So do we have time? It's cool. Let's see. Do we have time to maybe put some gator hide, one coat of gator hide on the top? What are you doing? Panning to the clock? Panning to the clock. <laughs> Actually. Dixie Bell, do I have time? I don't, I'm not sure. Let's pan to the storms coming this way. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and right. we may lose feed if these things actually hit. All right, well, let's see if we can. So what do we have, 15 minutes? Yeah, we can do it in, well, yeah, 10 minutes. Just put my whole hand in the paint. All right, so let's I need your help to bring this down. All right. Well, hopefully we hopefully the phone oh, won't God, oh, fall. We have a problem with our, you know, our phone once, holder. At least once a video, our phone drops on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's try to do this. Because we get a lot of questions 
Um, we'll do one coat of gator hide on the top. So this is um, slick sticked, it was cleaned, it's slick sticked, it's painted with two coats of um, driftwood and then just lightly sanded just to make it smooth. And now we're gonna do gator hide, which is Dixie Belle's toughest top coat. And um, I generally don't shake it because you can get some bubbles in it, but I know we're kind of pressed for time, so we're gonna do it. Shaking you, is a no-no. But you want to, um, you definitely want to stir it well. Okay, you want to get all the stuff that's on the bottom uh, up and just mix it up real well. That's going to give you your best results. Okay, don't just do like a half, uh, <laughs> okay, I can't say that word, I guess. Just make sure you stir it really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can use a damp brush with this product. It's water-based, so you can get your brush a little damp. And, and generally I don't paint out of the jar, but we're going to do that too. You have to work fairly quickly with this product, okay, because it dries super quick. You do not want to overwork it. So get it on, move on to your next row, and if you miss spots, don't fret too much. you got to do a couple coats of this. I find three coats is kind of the magic number. Um, You'll love it by the third coat, okay? But you gotta kind of work quickly and you gotta keep it damp. And I'm really using a light hand with this. And you wanna make sure you get all the way to the edge. You don't need a lot, thin coats, okay? And kind of overlap your first row. Always do one long stroke at the end. Okay, that way you don't have marks that stop halfway. And I know it can be kind of hard on the pieces that are uh, long, like, like the middle of this one. So again, just kind of work quickly. Try not to have to stop in the middle. You know, you want to have just un uninterrupted time. If you feel your brush dragging, just wet it down a little bit again. Overlap your last row. You can go back and forth while it's still <coughs> wet. You don't want to do that once it starts to dry. And I'm just doing a very light coat. Once it starts to dry and you, you overwork it, you start to get clumping and just little pieces that will start, you'll start to pull up with the, yeah. the good gator hide with the bad, with the stuff, not bad, but the stuff that's dried. And it's so tempting to go over missed spots. I know, it, it's very tempting. You're better off if you see a spot that's dried and you don't like it, you can lightly sand it after it dries completely and then go over it again with, with more coats. When I do gator hide, I kind of get, it's gonna sound funny, but I kind of get in the gator hide zone. <laughs> like you really just kind of got to focus on it. Watch your edge, okay, for drips. Very important. You don't want it to, to dry with drips on it. Like, whoa, over here. Susan Douglas asks, I forgot what the gator hide does. Does it seal it? Yes. Yep, it's the toughest sealer. So if you're doing, uh, you know, the top of a table, or a desk that's going to get used, a coffee table that gets high use. Um, this is what you want to use. It's the toughest. It's got a um, little bit of a sheen. It's kind of like the satin clear coat in nature. A lot of times I'll do the top of a piece, I'll seal it with gator hide, and then the rest I'll do in satin clear coat. I do find the satin clear coat a little easier to work with. So, um, you know, if you're just kind of doing the sides of something, you can, you can, you can do gator hide on the top and the satin clear coat on the sides. And your finish will look um, really identical. Connie Oliver says, do you ever use a sponge to apply the gator hide? I, I did. You did for a while. I did for a while, actually, but I like the brush better now. But lots of people use the sponge, the blue sponge, or like just any kind of dense dense sponge, so you can certainly do that. 
I just find working with the brush a little bit easier, but totally personal preference. Jean Dar says, love that it is waterproof. Now, it's not waterproof. Yeah, it's water. It's re it repels water. Yeah. But it is, yeah, so. Like if you sank this 10 meters down <laughs> in the gulf. You'd be in trouble. You're going to have some issues. <laughs> but yeah, we know what you mean. It's, it's, if you got to guard against, um, you know, something spilling on it, um, you definitely want to use Gator Ride. All right, so I did miss a spot right here, but I, you know, it's too late uh, in the game for me to go back because I can already see it's starting to dry. So the other thing you want to be careful with is um, if you go, once you start cleaning up your edge, if you, so all my brush strokes are going this way. When I clean up my edge, if I start to come up on, on the top, going this way, you're gonna have a brush stroke there, okay? It's, it, and that's hard to get rid of. Um, so you just wanna make sure that you stay clean around your edges, keep a super thin coat, and uh, don't, don't overwork it. And it is a beautiful finish, um, but I feel, I feel like it does take a little bit of practice to get, um, to get it right. So, um, and again, it's not a hard product, it's just one that you just kinda have to practice with. But it's, it's my favorite top coat, I and mean, once it's on, it's, it's beautiful, silky smooth, and super tough. All right, I think we're at almost 50 minutes, or 55 minutes, so um, if you guys have any questions at all, keep them coming in the comments. I always go back and look, so if you're watching on replay, give us a hashtag replay. Make sure you let other people know about this video. If you do not have a Dixie Bell retailer, we put our affiliate link in the um, in the description, so you can certainly order your Dixie Bell products from us. But please go to the Dixie Bell Paint Company site first. Type in your zip code, find someone near you, because if you can connect personally with the Dixie Bell retail, you are going to learn a ton. But we're all here for you, as the ambassadors are as well. Um, we want you to learn these products and have fun with them. So um, anyway, we can help. Let us know. And we thank you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. We'll see you next Saturday night. And I think if I can wait this long, this is what we're going to do next Saturday. So this was a black and gold mirror frame. And I still have the mirror, but I took it out. We painted it white, and um, we're going to glaze it and antique it. So if I can wait till next Saturday, we'll do it on the live. If not, we'll, we'll pick something else. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Take care.